Hi everyone, my name is Kerim Hanif and I work in Azure Stack HCI team uh, responsible for migration solutions. And uh, today I want to explain a little bit about uh, how we can move uh, and migrate VMs from Hyper-V to Azure Stack HCI using Azure Migrate. So this solution currently is in private preview and we are going to be shipping a public preview in coming months. When we were designing the migration solution, there were a couple of things we looked at. We had a couple of goals. Uh, one of them was it would actually have to support VMware and Hyper-V, not just one of the one of the other. It would have to support. Um, it would actually have a minimum downtime um, with with the VMs when we are migrating. It would have to be simple and first party solution. And when we look at the uh, current landscape of like uh, migration tools and migration options today, we can see that Azure Migrate is the only one that satisfies all of them. So what is the advantage of Azure Migrate solution? Uh, one of the biggest advantages is that you don't have to prepare your environment before migration. It's agentless. So you don't have to install an agent in a VM. You don't have to do anything like that for your source VMs. The other one is that your data stays on premises. So your data never goes to uh, the Azure and comes back. It, it only stays in uh, on-prem to on-prem. The other one is that um, we, we are going to support both Hyper-V and VMware. Um, currently the Hyper-V, like I mentioned, is in private preview, public previews in coming months. And then the uh, private preview of Hi VMware we are also working on it and it's also going to come in coming months. So if you look at the private preview support of the Hyper-V to HCI solution, we can see that the uh, host operating systems, meaning the um, the source, your sources, can be um, Windows all the way from Windows Server 2012 R2 to 2022. And the targets can be Azure Tech HCI 22H2 and, and, and above. The guest operating systems are, um, can start all the way from 2008 R2 SP1 to 2022 for Windows. And we also have in private preview uh, a bunch of different uh, Linux distros from Red Hat to Ubuntu to CentOS to, to, to others. And we're going to be adding more to these in public preview. And we currently support two Azure regions. One of them is Central US and the other one is uh, West Europe. So for 2008 R2, there's an asterisk, as you can see. Um, and the reason is that for 2008 R2, there are specific requirements for specific um, uh, software updates. And, um, and these are all going to be um, uh, documented in our, in our uh, docs.microsoft.com site. So let's take a look at the overview of how this works. As you uh, might remember, like I mentioned, that it, the data doesn't move. The data stays on premises. So how does this work? So as you can see, uh, at, and the, at the top of your screen, you, you can see that there's Azure Cloud and the bottom is on premises and you have your source Hyper-V source and you have your uh, target HCI source. So what happens is first thing that you need to do is you need to install a bunch of, um, like you need to install actually Azure Stack HCI and, and register it to Azure. So in this case, um, like what you will do when you go to Azure portal, Azure Stack HCI will actually be needs to be needs to show there. After that, uh, the other big um, prerequisite is that the um, Arc Resource Bridge needs to be installed. So it's a VM, and it needs to be on on, on Azure Stack HCI cluster, um, and and needs to be configured. Also, um, some uh, you need to create storage uh, paths. Um, and and tie them tie them to your um, CSV. For example, you can you just need to target some of the your CSV folders that you want the VMs to uh, to reside. Also, you need to create some virtual networks um, all all from Arc Resource Bridge um, to in order to uh, complete the prerequisites. And once you complete the prerequisites, then you need to go to Azure Migrate, and you're going just going to create a new project. And when you create a new project, the first thing you need to do is you need to do a discovery. And for the discovery, uh, you're just going to create a key um, to register your appliance because 
what you need to do is you need to install an Azure Migrate appliance on your source uh, environment. And this is um, because we don't have any requirements for VM uh, preparation, so you don't have to install an agent or anything like that, like I mentioned, but you have this appliance that you need, need to install just with this one server that you need to install on your source environment. And uh, once you um, create this, uh, again, it's, this is an appliance, it's like a VM. Once you install it, create this VM, there is a um, appliance configuration manager inside and um, it's a web-based application. And from there, you, you need to give some, um, uh, for example, uh, some rights to your uh, Hyper-V server so that we can discover. Uh, so you, you enter your credentials and you also need to register this, with this key that you created on Azure Migrate. And you enter that key and you register your device, you start your discovery, and then you will basically get, you will discover your servers or clients or Linux, uh, all, all the VMs that you have on this server is going to show up in Azure Migrate at this point. Once you do that, then you can, you can go ahead and start uh, the other process you need to do on the target side. Uh, because you are not going to Azure Migrate now, you um, if you have done Azure Migrate before, you don't you won't need this step. But in our case, since our target is uh, HCI cluster, then you need to do the same thing, very similar appliance uh, on the target uh, on the target side. So again, you create a key, you uh, register the appliance, you give credentials to your uh, HCI cluster there, and once you're done then you can actually go ahead and start the replication wizard. You select some VMs, you give some options, and we are all going to see these in our, in our demo, um, and the replication is going to start. So the disks, that, uh, disks from the VMs that you selected are going to uh, be replicated to the, uh, to the location that you provide, uh, provided when you are uh, preparing your server, uh, when you are doing like prerequisites. And um, once the initial replication is done, uh, then we are going to keep them uh, in sync with Delta replications hourly, uh, every hour. We're we're go we're going to do Delta replications to keep them in sync um, until you decide to migrate the server. And when you want to decide to migrate the VMs, then you're going to um, basically say, "Okay, I want to migrate." And then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, create, we are going to tell Arc Resource Bridge to create uh, these uh, servers from these disks that uh, we are keeping in sync. And then uh, we're at this time, we're going to automatically pause, of course, the replication. But we're going to make sure that, you know, the latest uh, Delta, we're going to do another Delta sync and make sure that everything is, uh, is, is there before we do that. And then, uh, you know, we are going to complete the migration. Um, at this point, we want you to go go to these servers, make sure that they are all um, looking good, all the IP addresses, all the um, hard disks, everything is, is, is migrated, everything is looking good, the applications uh, uh, continue to run. Um, and then uh, what you can do is there's an actually an option in Azure Migrate called Complete Migration. By the way, all of these actions you actually do from Azure Migrate. So Azure Migrate is your control plane. Um, and then you basically are going to say complete migration. This will actually delete the replication job that you created. And then um, you will need to decommission the, the servers manually. Uh, the, these will be shut down state, uh, but you can actually then decommission, just delete them from failover cluster manager, Hyper-V manager, and then you're done. Then uh, the migration is complete. So now let's take a look at a demo. So this, this is a recorded demo, but I'm just going to be uh, talking over it. So as you can see, this uh, is the um, this is the Azure Migrate uh, uh, web page. When you go there, uh, you can see that I have actually prepared this uh, beforehand. So I uh, went ahead and installed two appliances. I then uh, started the discovery. I did that, you know, um, I created the key. I created the appliance uh, on the source side. And then I, and I started the discovery and discovered th uh, 53 servers there. 
Then I went ahead and installed the uh, target appliance uh, and uh, and also like completed that as well. So all the prerequisites are done at this point. So the next thing that I'm going to do is then click on, on the migration tools, click on replicate. And then I'm going to be uh, selecting my intent. I intend to uh, migrate my VMs to Azure Stack ACS, so I select that and the Hyper-V. And then my um, appliance, on-premises appliance, um, which is the source appliance, uh, shows up automatically there. This is where the VMs are going to be, are, are discovered. It's basically showing me that. And the other thing that you can see uh, below is that uh, this is uh, the, um, uh, if you haven't configured your target appliance, uh, there's a shortcut to, to, to complete that. It opens up the Apple Wizard uh, to complete that. But I already did that, so I'm not going to click on it. So now I'm going to click on continue. And in, in here, I'm, it's basically starting the uh, replicate wizard. Uh, and in this replicate wizard, uh, what I need to first select is uh, is, is my target, uh, target server. And it's in this resource group, and, uh, and this is the name. So when I select it, as you can see, there is this like a green check mark. This means that Arc Resource Bridge is installed, configured, and all running. So we basically do a validation, little validation in here. And after that, if you continue, then uh, you will see that um, the, the target appliance is also configured and running. So that's also another thing that we check. And if you don't have this target appliance configured and running, it, and in this point, then we will actually show you how to do it instead of this screen. And we will show you, uh, you know, how to create a key target key, and and we, we give you all this information in here. And then you can actually go to uh, go um, keep this screen as is in here. Go back to your server, create a VM, uh, create the appliance. Uh, register the key, and every, when everything is done, you can come here, and there will be a link called uh, Reload, and you can reload, um, kind of like a refresh, and you'll basically end up in the screen. So you don't have to leave the wizard uh, if you forgot to do it. Then uh, we're going to be uh, selecting the VMs, and these are actually coming from the source appliance that we did the discovery. So I'm going to be selecting Windows Server uh, 2016 standard and some um, uh, Linux, uh, like Debian. Um, and after that, I'm going to be selecting some 2019 to 2022 data center. So it's basically like I'm just going to select like uh, five uh, VMs. And this, this VM is actually a big uh, 1.5 terabyte uh, disk uh, VM. And then you can actually see all the VMs that you selected in this. Um, uh, we actually show you that if you want. Then um, we're going to be coming to this target settings. So as you can see, there is a storage account. This is another prerequisite. So this cache storage account is something that we want you to create uh, uh, beforehand. Uh, or you can, you can create it like if you forgot. Again, uh, you can go ahead and create it out of band. Come here reload, and then continue, so you don't have to leave the wizard. But this uh, storage account is used for uh, storing some uh, one-time Azure Migrate stored some metadata. And that metadata is stored per uh, project, and you cannot change it. So that's why we are basically giving you this uh, warning saying that uh, uh, you cannot change this. Are you sure you want to uh, select this storage account? Uh, and once you confirm, you will see that we're going to uh, gray it out so you cannot change it. Um, then we're basically going to select where the VM, where we want the VMs to be, which um, uh, resource group, um, which virtual switch that we want it to use, and, um, and which storage path. And again, these are all things that you pre-created before coming here. That's why I could like it selected. If you, if you forgot, again, you can actually go ahead and change it, uh, create them, and come back and reload and continue. Then in the next screen, we are going to be selecting compute options. So you can uh, rename 
if you want the VMs, this is a great opportunity to change your naming convention if you like. So you can actually rename. We, give, we allow you to change the name. We um, also different things like vCPUs. We also check if the uh, if you use a character that is not allowed. Uh, we actually give you a warning. Um, and then in here we uh, select the we want you to select the OS disk because we cannot tell which one is an OS disk. So we want you to tell us which one is the OS disk. Then the um, number of vCPUs, for example, I changed it. Uh, I can also make it dynamic RAM VM if I want to. And then uh, I come here and in here, choose to unselect some disks. The disks that you selected in previous screen, which were the OS disks, are, are grayed out. As you can see, you cannot unselect them, but you can uh, you can unselect a data disk. If it's like, let's say, has the has your log files or something like that, you can just basically uh, unselect that. You can also make them a fixed uh, VHDX if you like, um, if you have a SQL server or something like that. And and you can also select like which disks you want fixed, which disks you want VHDX. So it's all uh, options in here. And you can also see the sizes. And uh, as you can see, the last VM is the, is the large one. And that's it. And then you uh, start to replicate. And at this point, uh, this screen takes around five minutes and that's why I speed it up. So um, uh, after five minutes, you, uh, after around three to four, it, it depends um, how many VMs you selected. So once uh, once they're done, you, then then you come to this screen and um, the auto refresh you need to do manually. So uh, uh, there is no auto refresh, so you need to refresh manually. And when you refresh, you can see that all the VMs are there. And then I'm basically now refreshing uh, and I'm speeding up. As you can see, these two are finished and uh, and these are continuing. And this um, initial replication and everything is all dependent on your network. So it's really hard to tell you know, how long it's going to take, but uh, we, we go as fast as we can. Uh, and as you can see, I have like uh, these two finished and this is the big one. This is going to finish the last. And the ones that are finished, they go into this like ready to migrate state. So now I want to show you um, the VMs before they before I actually migrate them. As you can see, it has an IP address. It's a DHCP. Um, and then uh, if I go to the um, DNS and everything, and if I go to the disks, I have like three disks. We're gonna look at uh, before and after, so that's why I'm showing you this. Now I'm going to go to the Debian. Uh, machine uh, VM and as you can see uh, this actually has like three disks as well and it also uh, is using DCP it has an IP address um, it's connected uh, like that okay so now um, uh, like once it's done uh, by the way the important thing is that while the uh, VMs are replicating the uh, they continue to run, so the source VMs continue to run. They don't they, they don't actually stop servicing or anything like that. So it can be during the uh, you know like work hours or anything like you can actually continue doing that without impacting your business. So at this point, like all the VMs are running on on the source side, and uh, it's like you're basically taking a backup. And uh, and then once we do finish the initial replication, as you can see, we are basically doing like the hourly delta syncs, and uh, we've been keeping them up to date. One of the things that we recommend is that you do the migration during a maintenance window or anything like that uh, would be preferable. And I click on migrate, and I can select an individual individual VM too, but I just want to go all of them at the same time. Uh, so as you can see, there are two two options in here. I can shut down the VMs or I can keep them running while migrating. The difference is that when I shut down the VM, of course, all the memory state is going to be uh, committed. So there's not going to be uh, any uh, data that is left in the, in, in the memory. So, um, so it's going to be um, uh, like you're, you're going to have like ensure that there's no data loss. But if you, uh, if you don't shut them uh, down, you can keep them running. But in that case, 
you know, there, uh, maybe if it's like a, let's say it's a stateless VM or something like that, you can do that, but that's not going to ensure data loss. So it's, uh, it's an option. So once you start the migration, um, uh, you know, when you can refresh, you can see that, you know, like migration, all the migrations are in progress. And again, you need to uh, refresh to see uh, when they are complete. Uh, but this is like a speed up time. So it took around, I'm going to actually show you how long it took, but it took around like 15, 16 minutes uh, to come to the state. But first I want to show you that the VMs uh, are turned off on the source side. This is my source. Uh, they're basically, um, as you can see, they're off. Both VMs are off on the source side. And on the target side, they're all running. This is the target VM that is running. I'm actually going to the uh, uh, IP config all and show you that IP addresses are, you know, gotten from DHCP. Everything is running, and then the uh, all the disks that were there are are again there. So now I'm going to show you the. Um, the other VM, which was the uh, Linux VM. And I'm going to log in. And in the Linux VM, again, I'm going to look at um, the network first. Um, I can see, you can see that it's connected and uh, the IP address is there. Um, and if we look at the disks, there were three, three disks, as you remember, and all three disks are mounted and uh, and running. So at this point, I'm happy uh, my migration succeeded. And the next thing that I will uh, need to do is to complete the replication. I go to this uh, replications view. But before that, I want to actually show you the uh, plant failover. As you can see, they're all, uh, these are the migration jobs. They're all completed around uh, 17 16 minutes and uh, for public preview and for uh, for general availability we actually want to to reduce this so we have goals to reduce this and now i'm going to go to replications and um, and i'm going to complete the migration so i'm basically selecting complete migration on all of them i'm just speeding up a little bit and once I'm done, um, I'm going to wait uh, and refresh. It's going to take around five minutes. And when they're, uh, you know, done, then they're all going to disappear from here. But at this point, you know, I'm just deleting the replication job. I'm not deleting anything else. Uh, the VM and everything is running. So I'm just deleting the uh, uh, replication job. So it's, it's running. I'm going to speed it up a little bit and then refresh. And as you can see, like all of them are disappeared. And if I go to the jobs, I can see that they're all uh, successfully uh, deleted, meaning like the migration is complete. So now, uh, lastly, uh, what I need to do is go to failover cluster manager, find the VMs that I, you know, uh, that that uh, that I have, and uh, and then remove them and also go to uh, failover uh, cluster manager. Uh, again, on the source, uh, find the VMs that are turned off. And, um, and then, of course, uh, delete them as well. And this will complete my migration work. Yes. That's all I have for you today. I hope you found this uh, presentation valuable. We can't wait to ship the public preview so you can try it yourselves. Thank you.